obedience behavior to teach puppies, place training. And not just place training to go get on your bed, but to stay on your bed so that we can eliminate naughty behaviors like counter surfing. Good evening, folks. Welcome to Bird Dog Chat. Thanks for joining us this evening. It'll take just a second for this to out to the interwebs. Oh, look at that. I just got a notification. I subscribe to my own channel. I don't know <laughs> if that's you do. cool or not, but it's like liking I do your it. own posts. Look at that. I just got an email notification that says Bird Dog Chat with Ethan and Cat is now available live, folks. Live, we are here. If you guys are new to our live streams on Wednesdays, we kind of have a system. First, we roll through check-in. So people that are checking in, watching us live, we will roll through where you're at. And then we go into some announcements and then the topic of discussion, which is going to be do-it-yourself dog training resources. And then from there, we'll actually move into answering questions. While this is all happening, we are playing Bird Dog Chat Bingo, which you can get your Bird Dog Chat Bingo card from patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. And then all of our idiosyncrasies, things that we do on a fairly regular basis, uh, you can mark off as bingo chat cards. And we will be giving away something phenomenal tonight. We will be giving away a course, a standing stones retriever course. Since we have that just recently the, put out. Or the versatile course if you have a versatile Or the versatile dog. course yeah, if you have a versatile dog. We're going to give away a course because we're talking about do-it-yourself resources. So um, I did just finish the re retriever course. So that is the one that we're talking about a little bit more tonight. Um, but if you have a versatile dog and that is your uh, preference, we'll be giving away that course as well. So. One of those courses to the first Bird Dog Chat Bingo winner. And then we'll roll into answering questions for the second half of the evening. If you have a question that's burning a hole in your pocket, please put it in a super chat and we'll get to that first. We give those priority and then we'll roll into the other questions that have been asked. So, so we got a bunch of people on Instagram just letting you know we're live on YouTube. If you want to join us, we are doing it right now, giving away one of our online courses tonight. Hop over there. You've got to be present to win. The Bingo. game starts now. Goodbye, folks. We'll see you soon. But not so, to you folks on YouTube. That, no, was, that was the Instagram. Goodbye to goodbye. Instagram. <laughs> so um, one of the things that I do want to stop here for just a second, I think I've gotten a little lax in it in the last few, but it is important to mention. Um, patrons, the largest supporter of everything we do here at Standing Stone. If you are a patron, we want to stop, stop for a second and say thank you. We appreciate the patronage. We appreciate your support. Um, if you are taking advantage, there are multiple different tiers. Okay, so you've got the ability to do um, live calls with uh, mostly me. We kind of divide things. But if you wanted to request Cat, you could attempt that, and I would still show up. So it is what it is, folks. You get me for the help online. But we can do um, live calls, whether that be a a video chat where I watch a session or we kind of just hash things out about where you're at in the process and where you need to go from there all the way down to be able to video your own sessions, upload to Dropbox, YouTube, streamable, something like that. Share the links in a private message section. We can discuss where you're at in training, how things are going. Look at the video. Here you go. This is pretty cool. So you can even get t-shirts. Yeah. And if you want, so this is kind of a silly thing. I requested one of the shirts. It took a little while for me to get it and I thought it seemed like an okay shirt but we definitely do want feedback you get quarterly t-shirts um it does With different take, designs yep they they've got a couple different designs we are in the process of making new so that we'll continue to grow and we'll swap those out some of them more fun as as things move on but um you've got the bottom tier which is this is showing your setup right yeah my yeah this is my membership aha Charlie's got a membership. We have no idea why, but thank you for the support. So last year, um, I wanted to ask a question, and Kat's like, only if you're a Patreon. So I signed up and asked the question, and then she responded, LOL, and never answered it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still a Patreon, so still a patron. Perfect. So um, all of that being said, we do want to say thank you. Again, the people on Patreon are not only getting support for their dog training journeys, it is a great supplement to our videos. It kind of is the, the way to sort through that to get what we can offer to you as the most valuable thing, which is our ability to read dogs and dog training situations. But 
You can see a few different tiers there. Um, there's a $5 tier, which allows you to play bingo in the evenings all the way up to the, um, if you go down one more, there's a $350 a month, and that's weekly calls uh, as well as all of the other things. So you get the private um, chat situation, um, T-shirts quarterly if you sign up for that. One guy uh, sent me a picture, and he said, hey, love the shirt. Thanks for that. Uh, it's awesome. It, it only cost me 600 bucks, but I love it. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I get it. I mean, it's, But it was included with other things. Yes, it yeah. wasn't the yeah, only yeah, thing. It's yeah, like, yeah. this is the, the coolest shirt ever. But it, yeah, the first one says uh, Standing Stone Patron. So it's, uh, it's kind of a cool deal. And all of the money that comes in through that goes directly back into creating content, equipment, um, people video here, editing. you know, we, yeah, video editing and, and videography. So everything that we're doing is, um, is, is funded Supported through y'all. So we appreciate Patreon. it and I will, I will get off of it, but I wanted to say thank you. So let's roll into our check-ins and then we'll move on from check-ins to our topic of choice and any other little announcements we want to make and then mm -mm -mm. answer some questions. So we've got Angleton, Texas, Minnesota, Indiana, somewhere in Indiana. Angelo, you're headed our way, so uh, I get you're going to be in Kansas by tomorrow, probably, I, I or Friday. I want to take just a know. quick second to check in for, um, we need a dumb name for this ugly rooster mount back here that's kind of standing like he's cockeyed staring Ethan's at the ceiling. Ethan's so disappointed in his um, tricks I don't know if something got happen, happened in shipping or what, but. That is the dumbest pheasant mount that I have ever seen. I'm so glad and it's I've got it front right and there. center. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, we could switch it for the the prairie chicken looks or the grouse. Excuse me, sharp tail looks pretty good. Let's um, let's let's switch that. You do check ins. I'm switching. I'll do. Ch He's like, I hate that so much. We're switching it. Okay, moving back along to check ins. Central Minnesota. We've got our. Uh, international check-in from St. Marie, Ontario. We've got more Minnesotas checking in tonight. Uh, Mich Howell, Michigan, New Jersey. Hey, Kelly, you guys got to be headed back to Kansas here pretty soon. We got a seminar rolling. Uh... <laughs> no, that looks terrible. You can't hide his tail. I know, but otherwise he's like, Just let him look at the wall. Let him look at the wall. He this is terrible. Just put him back. Just hang out over here. Oh, I don't like it. I'm going to have to fix that later. Okay. Hutchinson, Kansas. Woohoo! Hey, you guys made it already? You guys are a day and a half early. Heartland was... What? Uh, Elijah. Good night. Friday night, guys. Not Thursday night. Freaking we got Friday road night. Warriors. Heartland, go to, Wisconsin. Go to Salt City Brewery. Yeah, go to Salt City Brewery. It's a great place. If you do... Um, if y'all want to work we're gonna spray trees um <laughs> we can put you to work <laughs> I've got a chainsaw tort on let's mow rock the and yard roll, folks. all the things got seminar prep to do uh cottonwood california pretty prairie annie four weeks in a row good night <laughs> new record you, you clicked on something stop clicking S just just, click. just a second something something new york there you go. awesome i'm sorry uh, uh, Otsego, Minnesota, Waterford, Wisconsin, Mission, Kansas. Hey, Ian. Okay, now I think I'm caught up. Do, 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 do. Oregon City, Oregon. Montpelier, Indiana. Hidalgo, Texas. Hey, that was a really good movie. Hidalgo. Mm -hmm. Interesting fact about Hidalgo. Um, there are two major manufacturers of canvas tents in the United States. Used to be. Used to be. Maybe Used there's be. different I think now. There's, but just, there's one and a half now. Yeah, there I wouldn't two. believe there'd be more now. No. Nah, so the Primitive. thing is different, though. Primitive camping. Canvas, yeah, wouldn't, it wouldn't be more. But So one was Strin's um, TP. Okay, so I think Don died. Yeah, so Don died, but it was passed on to another gentleman. He kind of didn't do well with it. But um, So I believe Strin's and TP is borderline no more. But he created all of the tents in Dances with Wolves. So all the canvas tents in it were all made by one guy, Strins TP. Okay, so now, fast forward, Hildalgo, all made by Panther Primitive, another canvas tent-making company. Not so, a lot of options out there. Do you have one of each? 
Uh, actually, yeah. You probably do, right? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. we do rendezvousing. That's actually where we met. If you go back and watch a Yawa from forever and ever and ever ago, you'll hear the story of Cat and Ethan at new, some point. New in time. Bingo Square. Bingo Ooh. Square. Rendezvous something. I don't know how they met. Something. Something. That something. Would work. That would work. Ontario. Canada, moving right along, California. No, no, no. So um, I want to point this out. Kevin said three twenty-five a month. Holy crap! I get it a hundred percent. That and is I think not it's what 350. we're. It is three fifty, but it, it's it is a lot. I one hundred percent understand. But what you are getting is four thirty-minute consults um, plus daily messaging and everything else. So that is the top tier. There are only I don't not very many people in that specific tier. But if you're needing a lot of help. Um, we're doing weekly calls and it's, it's a very beneficial way. But if you look at that too, um, in comparison to sending your dog off for training, yep, even like most of the average trainers are, uh, anywhere between a thousand and probably $2,000 a month for training, 325 a month for 350, 350 a month for all the questions you want to do it yourself and which live is, video calls. Which, Correct, which, which is the topic of this evening. So we'll be getting into a little bit of that. But um, yes, it is expensive. It's drastically cheaper than sending your dog off if that is your goal. So think of, just think about it from that perspective. Doesn't fit your budget, I get it. But think about it from that perspective. Sturgeon Bay, Philly, Arizona, Quebec, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Texas, Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> Elijah says, count me in. I need something to do tomorrow. We'll put you to work. Don't you worry. There's things. A kennel, there is always things to do, man. Always. How's your electrical work? <laughs> I'm behind on a few projects. <laughs> Miami, what you, Florida. What do, you know? what do you know? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> what are your what's your skill set? Do you have a specific set of skills? We can use those. Olay, Pennsylvania. I don't know if that's even how you say it, but I'm definitely calling it Olay. Mitchell, South Dakota, Penn Agrel, Pennsylvania. Carlos, Minnesota. I just like saying these names with like gusto. It just is fun. Georgia, Oklahoma, Pedro, New Jersey, South Carolina. Anything else? I got Pedro. I got. The hunter is from Pedro, New Jersey, or P your name is Pedro and you're from New Jersey. I don't know. Probably. I don't know if that there is a Pedro, Missouri, or New, New Jersey. Jersey. I hope there is. I hope that there is too. But Google. Anyway. Vote Pedro. Thank you guys for all of your check-ins. We're excited to talk tonight about do-it-yourself dog training. So if you guys haven't heard our quote-unquote YouTube origin story, it is because we recognized a need for do-it-yourself dog training. People were always asking questions. How do I do this? I want to learn how to do that. Oh. And so we realized way back in the day that there was a need for <laughs> do-it-yourself dog training videos. What are we talking about? It says jack of all trades. There's a YouTube for that. Just uh, Google it. Just yeah. YouTube it. You just YouTube that. You just do it. You, you can learn how to do it put all. a car together. I mean, you can learn all kinds of stuff. You can definitely learn how to install a well pump. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, you, done that this week. You did good. You did good. Anyway, um, so that was the beginning of us understanding there was a huge need for content, for resources, for people that wanted to train and learn how to work with their dogs from home. 100%. And so that was where we started. And it honestly probably started before then when we were the person with a brand new bird dog that we had no idea what to do. So think about it this way, okay? When you have a question, literally... Everyone else has a question. It's, I think about it a lot like when I play golf, okay? So I'm not very good at golf. I used to, There's been times in my life where I've been mediocre, but I'm not very good at golf. And I will go, you know, whack, and, uh, and then walk over to get my ball. And, like, that was a horrible shot. And you see, find, like, ten others right there. Like, at least I'm not alone. It's the same thing with your questions, okay? So if you're having a question, somebody else is. And we were those people. I've literally done everything wrong, and including from from start to finish. I mean, you from 
finding and buying a puppy out of a newspaper, trying to do it myself, playing games that I learned, and I'm not picking grandpa. I know you're not going to watch this, but playing games that my grandpa said, this is how you teach a pointer to do its thing. He had me swinging a white rag around my head on a string, getting my dog to chase it, and then landing it on the ground. So like a Similar variation to of- wing on a string? Yeah, but just a-, a Sight pointing. A, I have sight no idea. Pointing, sight right? pointing. No idea. But- All the way to- We've done Our all. first dog, Sammy, and we're like, wow, she got her first pheasant. This is amazing, but we didn't get any pictures of it. So let's go ahead and throw our dead pheasant out in the grass and see if we can get her to point it again so we can go- so we can get a good pointing picture. Exactly. We let's get one hundred percent did this bird dog to point a, a dead, dead bird. bird in the tall grass. Tried to get our dog to point it on the edge of the tall grass, so they're so basically standing in the yard. And we took a picture of her, and we're like, "Wow!" Yes. Um, been there, done that. Got the postcard, sent it to my grandma. Okay, everything. But we understand everybody starts somewhere, and that's why we want to help educate people, and not in a condescending way, not be like. How could you even ask that question? No, we're 100% ready to answer those questions, help you understand, educate you, because we've all been there and we understand you don't know what you don't know and you don't even sometimes know the right questions to ask. So offering more information than you even think you need will help educate you. And so that's the basis of where our YouTube channel really started. That's how we decided, let's do these yawas, let's do these live streams weekly when we are obviously available. And then that grew into Patreon and the constant emails and contacts that we get that way and throwing out podcasts here and there. And then also the courses that we started to put out. Courses, uh, seminars. Seminars, oh, don't forget about those. Yep, so... Now, granted, all of these things cost money. All of these things, except for YouTube videos, all of these things also took a lot of time and or do take time to put on. So it's, um, it is part of our business, but it is our business model is helping the average person to get a trained dog, whether that be board and train here at the facility, which is something we definitely do. You don't hear us talk about it very often. In fact, I believe you could listen to... Every single YouTube video that we've done, and you would hear a plug for, we board and train dogs, send them to us probably less than 10 times. I mean, realistically, there's what, like 800 videos? And I bet you hear it less than 10 times. Somebody watch them all. And tell us. And tell us. Yep. Because I ain't got time for that. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't got time for that. But um, it's it's one of those things that we do we do want to help people. So all of the things that we do have around, okay, that is YouTube videos. Those are one hundred percent free. They will stay one hundred percent free, and we're going to continue to as we can creatively come up with new ways or new versions of the things so that you see more pieces. Our YouTube videos will always be full. Not every single video, but. All of our training videos, we try and do a full training session with whatever that is. So you get to see a lot of, oh, we've got somebody. Somebody's going to watch accepted. all the videos. Awesome. Bring it on. I want a statistical like bar graph of how many times we say, send your dog to Standing Stone Kennels for a board and train training a, program. A bar graph. It's going to say a number on the side and it's going to say, how many times did they say it? And it's, there's literally one bar in the bar graph. Maybe. Um, no, maybe. That's what you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But if you do it just right, it'll be a huge bar. Oh, it'll be that's zero right. Zero to one on the left hand side, it'll be huge. Huge. Yeah, zero to one. <laughs> huge. Uh, okay, I just got to have this other check in because I just want to say this name. Wikiwachi, Florida. Wikiwachi. Did you say that right? I don't know, but I said it the way I wanted to say it. And that sounded so fun. I want to go to Wikiwachi. Where is Wiki Watch? It's in Florida. Where in Florida? It's got to be in the Keys area, like down in the like a little island portion. Yeah, definitely want to go there. You have to drive on a bridge to get to Wiki Watchy. I want to do it. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? <laughs> anyway, we digress because, you know, we have dog brains. No, it's coming up. Oh, Wiki Watchy. Is very much not bridge related. It's right <laughs> smack dab in the middle of the state. <laughs> Landlocked. Well, I still want to go there and then go to the beach afterwards. 
It's uh, west of Orlando. Yeah, kind of on the coast-ish. Ish. It's got a cool name. Sweet. We'll, we'll give it that. North of Tampa. I like it. All righty, folks. Um, it's, so we have YouTube videos. We did create an online course. Now that, so that it's explained well, is a guide to the YouTube videos, essentially. They're organized properly. They have all of the pieces that involve um, how to navigate each individual video, how to navigate the process that we're looking for, essentially. Um, somebody asked, do we have standing stone decals? Yeah, we have stickers. They come out with almost, maybe we don't have any anymore. We sent stickers out for like a year with every single order on standingstonesupply.com. We were sending them out, but I don't Now I don't we know. send koozies. They look like, throw me one of those koozies up there. No, right up there. They're by the drink cups. Hey, yeah. Woo! So they look like this. They say Standing Stone Supply, and then they say Standing Stone Kennels, and then just in case you ever drop your beer, they say Whoop. Standing Stone Supply again. Ta da! Um, brief intermission says the rare special release Abraham Bowman is what is in the cup tonight. This is a. Is it tech? Technically bourbon? It says whiskey. Limited edition whiskey. I think it's still bourbon. It's still a bourbon? I believe so. And it would be a small batch because it is limited edition, or is it technically single barrel? I think they bat- I think they might batch that. I don't know. They're, I don't know a lot about their limited releases, except they're delicious. This one is. It says uh, gingerbread number two. Yep. So gingerbread poop. I don't think that's what they were going. I think it's release number two. <laughs> but, you know. Wow. I don't really care for bourbon typically, so that's going to be a hard pass for me. Isn't it uh, John J. Bowman is the single barrel? The I bowl? think so, yeah. John J. Bowman, and what's the small batch? I don't remember. Well, the... Um, Let me... I have the internet at my fingertips. The Bowman bourbon stuff is... Delicious. It's very, 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 very hard to find. And um, Charles has a knack for finding very, 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 very hard to find things, I guess. So Bowman, he knows a guy. Bowman Brothers is the It's just batch. the Bowman Brothers. Yeah. But the bottles all look like that. So it's kind of a little with a and a big corky on the top. Oh, was can you can you go over that again? I liked it. With a little corky on the top. Anyway, so we digress on the uh, beverage of what choice. What are you pulling up? I was going to pull up the course, but it's, <coughs> I need my laptop because I don't. So I wanted to create the course in a sense that it would be very fluid because I feel and we feel that there is not a like we work on just this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Absolutely. we work on just this. Then we work on just this. Do you have access to um, pull up the course on your computer? I'll get you access. Dun, dun, the answer dun, is dun. probably no. Okay. So with all of that being said, which basically we're going to show here is kind of how the course works. Dog training in general is not a linear process. Most of the courses that we found and kind of reviewed and everything are like day one, oh. step one, do this. And then do this. And the question that comes up with it is like, what do I do with the rest of my time? That Day one, step one took 20 minutes. Okay, so what do we do with the rest of the day? What do we do with the rest of the week? How do we do that? So Cat created, and I say Cat because Cat did all of it. Um, it's it's 100% her project with me looking at it from a distance going, hey, it looks good, honey. Um, so she created a, a sample weekly schedule, and this is something that you should attempt to kind of apply and then adapt to your life. And then also a checklist that shows you, you can do this, 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 this. You should start in this zone. And then includes a checklist of all of the training equipment that you need to be able to do it yourself. And when you need those things throughout the training process, so you can kind of be prepared. Uh, if you like to be prepared, did you find it? 30 seconds. No, I didn't. You were like, question, I was going to try and help you if you. We okay. found it. So we she created 
a process. We talked about it, but she built all the course out. But it's a, a three-part process. Basically, all of the things that you should be working on. So your specific training goals. And then, have you got it? 30 seconds of loading. Loading, loading, loading. But it breaks down all of the things you should be working on at the same time, as well as is a guide to the YouTube videos. Because we hear that a lot. Like, how do I find the right video? I get this one, and it jumps to a different part, and then it jumps to a different part, and all of the different things that it jumps to. So here you've got, like I was saying, your obedience goals. That's your training session. And you have developmental goals, and then you have complementary goals. So these are all the things you should be working on at the same time. Simultaneously, yes. Because there's not an exact, like, this to this to this. It's like this and this and this all at the same time because it's so important for a dog's proper development. It's not like, oh, we're only working on obedience goals for this week, and then next week we're going to work on things like socialization and nail maintenance, and then next week we'll maybe get to bird stuff. It's including some pieces let's from incorporated it all at the same time complementarily to each other. Absolutely. Including pieces from the puppy training basics DVD that we created that literally we didn't sell any of. So it's <laughs> But there. it's really good information. So we incorporated it. There are it. some. It's it's more it's not our standard video. It's more of a um uh I don't know what overview the, of that yeah. topic in specific. So it's it's very really scripted. good information. Yep. yep very, very scripted, scripted but there you go. And Click then on at the that, bottom. Um, yeah, click on one of those supporting documents, like the sample weekly routine. So this is something that I put together as well for each lesson. So there's multiple sample weekly routines that change weekly of this is what your week could look like incorporating all of your goals and everything that needs to happen in that week of training. And Sunday through Monday or whatever, Saturday through Friday. So those are all things that you could be including. Now, if your sample weekly routine doesn't look exactly like this because other things are going on in your life, that's absolutely okay. But this is just a general idea of how you could structure your own routine to incorporate all of the things that need to be incorporated. And then there's another supporting document that includes a checklist. So let's say you're like, hey, I need additional help But my dog's 12 weeks old and I've already started on some of these things. Well, this is a great resource to catch you up and figure out where you need to really start in the course, as well as it's a good resource if you are starting the course from eight weeks old. You can go through and you're like, okay, week one, I did this, this, and this. Okay, I need to revisit this because I really haven't checked all the boxes because we get, you get in what you put in and you get out what you put in. I don't know what. You get out of it this what is, you put into it. This is like any education. Yeah. You get out of it what you put into that it. That was the words I wanted. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you get in what you put in. No, not exactly. You get out what you put in. So let's say, you know, week four was a shit show at home and you just didn't have the time. Wait a second. Beep. Beep. Sorry, children. Um, Week four was tough because life got in the way and you might have to revisit week four because you didn't hit all the boxes. You didn't check all those places. So that's completely fine. Or you have a puppy that you started with this process older when you've gone through and you've checked the boxes and you're like, oh man, I didn't know in week two, I should be doing this, this, and this. Well, revisit week two, go to that lesson, go through that process, make sure you can check that box before you move on. Because this is, though it's geared for an eight-week-old puppy through a year-old puppy, you can absolutely start this with an older dog and fill in the blanks where you need them. Love it. So really great resource. And we have adapted, not adapted this, but we have created this exact course, not only for a versatile dog, but we just released the retriever version of this may 1st so we've had a handful of people or more request hey i've got a retriever i love that you have a course that has all the versatile dog stuff how can i apply that to a retriever well you can absolutely apply it to a retriever um but only through a certain point because there's a lot of the same basics mm-hmm. of clicker training and all of that and the obedience side of things. But then when you get into it, 
it a little bit changes. So I created the retriever based course that is retriever based and that just went out May 1st. And so that is now available as well. And then we've got some other upcoming courses like our trained retrieve course need to put some time into that as well as our advanced steadiness field course, our whelping course. I've got so many supporting documents for the whelping course. I'm like, I got to get to that because it's just like eating a hole in my pocket because I'm like, I just want to give this information to people. It is so valuable. Um, and we utilize it every litter that we do. And we've created so many videos on the whelping process as well as week all of the- Week by week, all of the yes, progressions all of, the of everything you need to be doing. Absolutely. As well as like average daily weight gains for a sporting breed, you know, versatile dog standpoint. Because obviously if you have a small breed, it's not going to quite correlate. Um, but still, all the milestones are going to be very similar that you need to hit. So I'm, I'm working on those. They take time. If you look at when our versatile dog course came out and when our retriever dog course came out, it was like six months difference. So I'm not saying it takes me six months, but it takes me six months to come up with the time to hold that away, to put the time into creating that. Basically when she works on the course, I just throw her up here and lock the door from the outside. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're not going to be any help for Work the next woman. <laughs> hundred hours. So just get at it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the last piece of this, uh, doing it yourself and resources that we can help provide, just come up with uh, kind of a list of the things that we are doing throughout the year. We have the Lone Stone Seminar, which is, I mean, you're pretty much out of luck for that one coming this weekend. And then after that, uh, what is the calendar we, of the events? We There's have the, a small one. So yep. So we have day. the Navda studying a seminar. That's a single day seminar, June 3rd. Um, it is through the Kansas Navda chapter, but it is open to people um, not that are that are not members of Kansas Navda. It's a great opportunity to come out, work on steadiness with your dog. Um, from an AKC standpoint, from a Navda standpoint, all of that will be covered. And then um, there is information I, on the Kansas Navda Facebook page about signing up. You can also absolutely reach out to us if you're interested. We can give you more information, and then you can get signed up for that as well. Start uh, throwing your questions in, guys. That's what we're headed to next as we finish this up. But And then the next seminar that is on the docket for this year is through Her Upland. Um <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, kids watching their YouTube for the evening, doing some kid stuff. Um, but the Her Upland seminar is coming up on Jul in July. Uh, what are the dates? The 13th through the 15th. And that is something that Ethan and I are going to be doing together. I got to do the Her Upland first women's bird dog training camp last year and it was awesome and they're doing so many more this year so this is for women attendees only correct yep for this so seminar. they just brought me in for eye candy <laughs> you just keep telling yourself that babe you throw a shing off my teeth or something can you do that real quick put that in post <laughs> but um we were <laughs> We um, are really excited about this seminar, and it's awesome because there is a whole bunch of other women and their significant others helping uh, put on this course, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's all about uh, novice training, so it's going to be get you into bird dog training. And so if you go to Her Upland, uh, is it herupland.com, Charles? Yep. HerUpland.com, you can get signed up for the seminar. You can look at the other seminars that they have offered. Um, the one that we are going to be doing is July 13th through the 15th or 13th through the 16th or whatever exactly those dates are. It's in July, the middle of July sometime, and we'll be there. Did you take this picture? Because I can't find you. She's right there on the left. Hat pulled down real low. I'm, I'm trying to zoom in on it, but I can't. It's under the it's right EV. There. No, I'm under the EV of Her Upland Events. That's my face under the V. Over the V? Whatever. Over the V. The, v, the v gets me. The that's, V. Yeah. That's where I'm at in the picture, if you're wondering. In the brown. Oh, this one, this one, this one. This and then this, cool. was, this is the next one that we're doing this year. I talked to uh, Ben, the gentleman that's kind of organizing this. He does not have, Ben Baker, um, does not have very many spots left over. So this is a private uh, club based out of New Jersey. I, I believe private club. I'm, hopefully I'm not speaking out of turn here. But basically, 
They opened up two members first. Um, so I know they took a few and I don't know what his exact number is on this, but this place sounds awesome. I have not been there, but they have lodging on site. That information is there. Um, I think if you click those, does it pull it up bigger? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is the information. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning event. Um, they have a full restaurant on the place. I mean, this, uh, I think, We're place excited shooting. to go. If you talk to him, you may be able to even do things. And this is me completely talking out of turn. But you may be able to do something like, I think they have a clay course and some other stuff early or a day later. So it could be a really cool getaway for a couple people. Um they have kennel setups and or availability for the dogs. I know that. And um, it seems like a really freaking cool place to be. We will be, there you go, right there. It says we can board our dogs for the weekend at the kennel facility. So lots of options in in this one as well, um, based out of uh, the New Jersey. So Northeast, um, kind of cool. We have the ability there to do all kinds of fun things and lots of different seminar opportunity options. And that is something that we Aww, shooter. can't oh, shoot them, shoot them, shooty, shooty in the picture. Um, that's not that's something that we can stress enough. So Uncle Peter's there is perfect legs. Look at those <laughs> bad boys. Check out his legs, baby. The only thing that prevented that from being the cover of Orvis's Hunt magazine is he's wearing mountain <laughs> khakis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, conflict uh, of interest. Just a little bit. Zoom in on that picture real quick. Anyway, I just want to talk to you guys about seminars. So seminar is a great way to go get hands-on time with a trainer that you trust and your dog and take all of that in and then go take it and apply it during the off time, the off season, the training season, when you're not actually there at the seminar. Sure, you're going to be working through things while you're at a seminar, but most of that seminar time is to teach you how to take what we're trying to teach you home. I kind of lost what I was saying. The biggest thing that I want to say that I see from people. But you take that information and you take it home with you and you apply it at home. Yes. To make progress with your training goals. Sorry. There's that's no, 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 no. blah, so, blah, blah. No, there. it's 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 to gather information and take home. Now, the cool thing about it is that we have a large, we typically do them with a large variety of dogs doing different things. So you get to see maybe some takeaways from the puppy zone, even if your dog's a little older than that. But you also, if you have a puppy, you get to see all of the takeaways all the way through typically some level of advanced dog category. Now, the thing that we hear the most is people going, oh, my dog's not ready to go to the seminar or whatever. That's why we leave them fairly vague because there is so much time and so much availability to incorporate so many different levels of dogs because we usually keep the number of dogs there pretty small so that we That's can- That's how we prefer it. So you can learn the most from it. Yes, but each individual person gets a ton of one-on-one -on -one time and- a ton of group time. So you get to see everything that everybody else is doing, good and bad. And then you get to see what your dog specifically has the ability to learn and gain from that seminar. So it's fun. It's a it's a it's a really cool environment. We get to do fun activities. You get to hang out with us if that's something you're interested in. But um And the the, the other th side of it is let's say your dog is more advanced and you're watching this puppy do puppy stuff. Are you ever going to get a new puppy? I mean. I won't. Not in 2023. We've nope. had that conversation. But nope. in 2024, absolutely, we're getting another puppy. I got a puppy, puppy vetoed <laughs> stamp for my birthday. I bought it for myself. <laughs> but you most likely in the next, you know, 5 to 10 to 15 years or next year are going to be getting another puppy. And then you're going to be planning on how to work with that puppy. And you may find something from one of these seminars that you're like, oh, my gosh. Why didn't I do that with my last puppy? Or I need to be incorporating into that with my puppy next time. So it's, you are gathering information. And that's what I feel like all of these do-it-yourself resources are so much about. So from our YouTube channel, from Patreon, from the podcast that you can listen to, whether it's our podcast or any podcasts that are out there, Gun Dog It Yourself podcast is a great podcast that brings on lots of different trainers with lots of different information. 
Um, and you take all of that information and you percolate on it and you apply it to your dog and you apply it to your next dog. And it's just a very valuable resource. And maybe you end up getting your puppy to a certain point and then you're like, okay, now I kind of feel like I'm at my cap of what I can truly do with my own dog. Now it's time to seek some professional this help. GDIY on Patreon? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have very good taste in Patreon. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but then you go from um, doing it yourself and then utilizing the resources that are out there. And you get to the point where you're like, okay, I need a little more help. And then you go to a seminar and you're like, okay, maybe I a little, need a little more help than that. And maybe you go to a Patreon account. And then you're like, okay, I need a little more help than that. And then you go, okay, I'm sending my dog off for some of the more advanced stuff or some of the more complex stuff. And then I'm getting them back and I'm taking them hunting and I'm doing all the things that I had goals for and that I wanted to do with them. So there are so many resources out there. We are happy to be part of that resource community. There are other resources out there. We're not saying you have to be standing stone all the way. Um, but if you want to do it yourself, there are way more resources out there today than there were 15 years ago when we got started, guys. So you are in a much better place to work with your dog from home than we were. I do want to say that somebody commented on the fact that it looks like I've gotten a little bit of sun. I've been outside <laughs> a lot, and I do wear a daily face moisturizer with SPF 45, okay? Because my, so, okay, I get facials monthly because I don't want to look 40 when I'm 30, I don't want to look 50 when I'm 40. Okay, that's coming up a lot sooner than I want to admit. But I get daily or I'm monthly. I'm sitting too close to say anything. Yeah. I get monthly facials. And so I was like, honey, you need to take care of your skin. Because my, I'm going to fuck this up. Esthetician. Easy, mama. Esthetician. She says SPF is the most important thing to be utilizing. And so I'm like, okay, you need to do that as well. So you're using SPF 45 daily. Is that what it is on? I don't know. You just said that. I'm pretty sure it's right. Okay. You're using a daily SPF because I got you started on that. Yeah, it makes I my wanna, face feel nice. I don't want you to look 50 when you're 30. Obvi obviously, I need more SPFs for as much time as I spend in the sun. Or reapply. All right. Let's answer some questions. We've got some really good questions and conversation around poodle pointers. Uh, Pudel Pointez. Uh, first and foremost, poodle pointers are not a poodle crossed with a pointer. Not in any time in anywhere recent history. Not like, like a golden doodle, to. not right. like a it's labradoodle. Not, not that they were supposed to. It's like saying that there's pointer in short hair. Sure. Like, there could be. Let's talk about this century, okay? Yeah. So not a poodle crossed with a pointer magically makes Pudel pointers... Somebody's version. Um, so uh, it was just, it was picking up on the mic somehow. Mm -hmm. um, the, you're fine. I just was trying to figure out if I was like getting buzzed for doing bad things. I don't know. The uh, poodle pointers, all the things. Um, they're great dogs. Just get one from somebody that knows what they're doing. They have a large variety of coats and there are some good ones. There are some bad ones. That is every, every breed, breed out there, period. Including short hairs. Mm. What do we got for questions, though? I'm really good at this. It says, I send everyone that asks about my dog training to someone uh, and some that don't to your products and information. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Blair. We appreciate that. Let's see if we can find some questions because it is time for that. Hey there. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Do you have one yet? <laughs> I don't have much dance left in me. <sighs> Sorry, there's a lot of people. Uh, guy with the pink gun decals. Ooh, this is ooh, a good ooh, one ooh, for ooh, you ooh, because ooh. this is a process. So. Basically, I've mentioned this before, but basically Ethan is, by definition, 
paralysis by analysis. So there is no guy with a pink gun decals because I can't figure out what I would want on a decal and or find somebody that can design it and or do that. And I, I'm saying right now, don't offer to do the design work because you don't want to work with me on this because I'd be like, meh. Something kind of like that, but different. But I don't really know. It just it doesn't strike me the way that I want it to pop or something. So, do you find a question? Yes. Go so, ahead. good way to distract my GSP from chasing butterflies while attempting to train a serious question. And that is a serious question. Uh-huh. Dogs, especially pointing breed dogs. Squirrel. Squirrel, as, where, as well as can be very visually oriented. So movement distracts them. Hex actually does this quite a bit when yeah, we go out in the a, yard. He's a sight point mother trucker. And so it's important to interrupt that behavior and move them on to scent pointing. Scent pointing practices. Scent pointing exercises. So how old is your dog? If they are ready for scent pointing stuff, you need to move on and you need to get them out and you get them started with scent pointing. The other side that I would I would kind of apply to this is when we work through training sessions, okay, so we try and do sessions with meals. And as you build focus around eating and working, that's a dogs are place and situationally oriented. So that becomes a very good time to understand now is when we work, and I'm working for something that I'm very driven to work for, which is my meal. This works for, um, if introduced properly, upper 90 percentile of dogs, okay? If the dog says, meh, not interested in eating or working, the meal is gone, and you attempt at the next meal. Here is your meal again. Let's do this. And it doesn't take very many. They miss a few, and they go, wow, I should really pay attention and work. Okay, so you can take that from inside. You can move that inside session to different rooms, and then you can move that outside. And you should be able to maintain focus even through the butterflies and everything else if you're in that situation of this is a training session time. After you, if you're still struggling with that, we need to probably reevaluate uh, what the rewards themselves are and how we can build more drive around that. But if you to make the scent side of things more valuable, more important. Than the sight side of things. Uh, I'm not even talking about scent versus sight at this point. I'm just talking about staying focused during the training session. Okay. So now the other side of it, like you said, the scent versus sight is a huge problem. It's a huge problem with today's GSPs and ours included. We just talked about hex. Okay. So as we build in versatility to short hairs and kind of breed that direction, you get more visually oriented dogs Pointing being a strong instinct in there as well. They tend to visually see things and try and point them. So it is and or chase, but it is a it is a distraction. So I would say building on your sessions is going to make a huge difference in being able to keep focus. And then last thing involved with that is we move into the color conditioning cheers. category. Um, yeah, there's microphone cheers there. So we move into this um, the category that we need to be working with e-collar conditioning, okay? So we have a full understanding in all situations. And then once you're collar conditioned, you have the ability to pull focus from distractions, whether that be chasing butterflies or that be anything else. So that's the biggest progression. We explain it as teach, that's positive reinforcement and food rewards, typically your meals. And then we differentiate, which is working through multiple different behaviors, still all in the same area. This is uh, very localized. Then after differentiating, we generalize, which is moving this differentiated training session. So we can run through all of the gamut of the cool tricks we know in all of these different places, gradually moving into higher levels of distraction. So your kitchen, to your living room, to the, your basement, to your garage, bigger distraction, to your backyard, bigger distraction yet, then maybe to a dog park with a dog running around. Huge distraction, okay? So if you can work through all of those things, then move into the collar conditioning portion, which is what we referred to as proofing. Now, there is a proofing collar conditioning section as well, but proofing is going to take you to the next level. So I hope that answers the question. Um, next For year. For Phil, I think that Phil. was yep. who he's asking. Absolutely. 
How old does my dog need to be uh, for the Her Upland Novice event? Charles I think Upland. alive. Four months. Charles yep. It does say four, four months. Four months. Yep. Okay. So that's what I was going to say. So I know alive. at the other Her Upland event that I was at, we had a whole variety of dogs in different levels. And I feel like four months, 16 weeks was the minimum. A, you're fully vaccinated. And B, your puppy is mentally mature and ready for some of the advanced quote unquote advanced training that we're going to be doing just more of the things that your puppy needs to be exposed to. So, um, four months, 16 weeks and they're ready or to roll. older. Yes. All right. What do we have for the next question here? Proper square footage to quail ratio. I run my dog in Astra and want to house my own quail soon. Okay. So what I would recommend with quail would be a, Mm, two options, okay? So if you train on the property or have the ability to house the birds on the property in which you train, a Johnny house would be a really cool thing to develop. You put quail in there, you have a door that opens to the training area, you open the door and they fly out. You want most of them to fly out, not all of them. And then you have recall funnels and those they make predator proof recall funnels but the birds call back to the Johnny house. It's a sweet setup, especially as they get better. They fly further away. They spread out. They are wily and wild. You don't need a lot of space. Like a four by four could house, I don't know an exact number. I'm going to make this up, but probably 40 quail. Okay. And a, a four by four area, 40 quail. Quail huddle up in a Like 40 quail looks like this. This is a huddle of 40 quail. That's not an exaggeration. Um, they don't take up very much space if they're actively flying and working. If they are supposed to live in the zone, our pen is 8 by 24, I believe. Um, and what do we have out there right now? Like 200 some plus. So 8 by 24, 200 some plus. They are healthy and fine. Quail Fly, don't take up much space. Good. Yep. Quail, and I set birds the other day. They all flew. Um, they all flew great. So quail don't take up a lot of space. Chucker, on the other hand, they need a little more space. Pheasants need exponentially more space. Especially and um, ducks right are now. a mess. Yes, because they they will fight and kill each other unless they have blinders on. They're all in the pen right now, actually. <laughs> we got pheasants out there, too. I have, well, I have one. Oh, one <laughs> pheasant. For my NA dogs this weekend. I like it. So um, all in all, actual dimensions, not a lot of space, but quail... Um, uh, recall pens would be awesome. Question. My wife and I just picked up our chocolate lab puppy on Sunday after the basic obedience training. What would be the next step? All right. So I'm going to answer this with a, please check out the online training course. Hopefully you're playing bingo and you win tonight. So you can just get a code, but the retriever online training course available at standing stone kennels or standing stone supply.com click courses. That gives you step-by-step, kind of like we demonstrated before, showed that off before. Um, if not, sort through YouTube videos. That's uh, I was going to say the cheat code is YouTube.com. Yeah, I, the videos are all there. You just don't have the guides to the videos. That I mean, and literally, the I don't try documents and, and well, yeah, I, I and don't, the I don't want to paint it as something else. There's no. no extra videos there. It is the videos that are, there's like a handful, very small number of extra videos, but the videos are on YouTube. If you want the guide to the videos, that in is the what the course is. In the order and the instruction and yep. the supporting documents, like we showed you, the sample weekly routines, all of that is incorporated with the course. Uh, next year, I believe the BDC Nationals is in Kansas. Is there a chance I can stop by and meet you? 100%. Yeah. Just let us know when. Um, by we'll appointment. schedule something. Yeah, by appointment, we say that just so that we make sure that we've got time for you. That is the goal. Yep. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Poodles are the number one hunting dogs. Labradors are very hard to train. Great question. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I even read that. I'm sorry. TJS, thanks for being here. I don't know that I can stand 100% behind your statement, but you are entitled to it. So Tyler Strait said, do you hunt your GSPs for grouse in wooded areas? Interested in the adjustments needed to hunt wooded areas as opposed to open fields. 
The biggest adjustment that I would make in wooded areas is I would buy a GPS collar unless your dog is very accustomed to the woods. And even if it's very accustomed to the woods, I would buy yourself a GPS collar. The key there is being able to find them. I, I mean, it's the, the epitome of... I lost my dog hunting and I laid my jacket down and it came back the next morning was invented in the woods, I believe. So, um, I would say rarely it happens, but rarely are dogs lost on the prairies. Often are dogs lost in the woods, even if that's for a period of time. But, um, a GPS collar is going to be the number one. Now a good dog does well at adjusting naturally to different types of cover. So, with a little time and a little handle, they should learn to stay closer in the woods and run big in the wide open prairies, medium range in the thicker grass prairies. They should adjust naturally to cover. And that's the biggest thing that I would say is the peace of mind of a GPS collar will be huge. Fun story for you. I got to go grouse hunting, grouse woodcock hunting years ago with some clients in north central Michigan, still in the mitten not in the Upper Peninsula. It was kind of like here zone, probably. Um, it's always what Michigan people do. I live in the mitten part. So um, in that situation, I had dogs that had never been in the woods outside of a little bit of mountain hunting, but it's kind of still different. And one of the dogs kind of got out, ended up on a trail because most of that's public and it has some trails and was like chasing a four-wheeler or something like that. I'm going to tell you, I, ha I had GPS collars on, and I was very, very thankful that it was because all of a sudden I looked, and I was like, where are the dogs? I haven't seen them for a minute. Um, oh, they're 200 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards, 500 yards, 600, setting world records and speed there. But the um, they'd basically gotten on one of those trails, and it was essentially like a straight-ish line chasing an ATV or doing something to the effect. And Without that collar, it would have been ridiculous to try and find them. I mean, who knows if I would have even found them because they got a thousand yards away from we'd spent the rest of the day trying to find these dogs. So it's um, GPS collars would be huge. It is something that will be available at Standing Stone Supply very shortly. Uh, I've been kind of waiting to do our initial order as we move into that as a new product because Garmin's just coming out with a brand new. Um, some brand new units around the training and track and train system. So we'll have that out. They will be available uh, before the end of the summer. What do we have next? This is a good one from Jace Broda. You have a great track record on NA tests over several years. Do you plan on the UT more often in the future or even the IT eventually? So Charlie. This is a Charles. 100 question. million percent. So just so we can <laughs> shed some light on this, um, we have taken a dog to the U uh, Invitational. Next. And My by dog. we, we mean cat. cat. And he's had a couple opportunities, and he has not finished the, util uh, the Invitational. He has missed something, then something else, and he is just not finished. He's my Nixer. To answer, he's my yeah. punky Nixer, man. He is, and he he's is. my first dog that I've ever trained to any level of training. And he has taught me a lot. We do run a lot of dogs in natural ability. We do plan to run a lot more dogs in utility because of a couple different factors. First and foremost, water has been very, very difficult to come by. Now, it takes probably on average three to four months of solid training to get a dog utility prize one steady to wing shot and fall okay so but that's we have access to that it takes grass and birds we have a lot of access to that so because we do a lot of akc master hunter and though you're not running your utility dogs at a master level with a brace mate it's still very similar and we run a lot of master dogs yep so in that situation um we put a lot of time into that the duck search portion for us has always been kind of like, oh, well, we have time to drive the four hours to the duck search pond today, and we'll spend a day or a day and a half working, and it's like, and it figure this out. And it takes more than that. It takes more than that. It it's does. the same with all of your other training. It it takes time, conditioning, and reps, and we haven't had that. 
So the biggest hold on doing more of that is just having access to water, which is built a duck search pond. If you want to check out the guy Been with there, the pink did gun, that. Yeah, the guy with the pink guns channel, um, a new video coming out called, I think it's going to be called hashtag farming. Um, but we show some of the new habitat projects for the property as well as highlight parts of the pond. Yep. The new uh, duck search pond and what that is. It's approximately three and a half to four acres Flooded timber and some ponds and some stuff when and it gets some vegetation. Islands. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I said some ponds. Some islands. Islands. Yep. I knew what you meant. Yes, so I you threw did. that in there. I appreciate it. They'll have, uh, once the vegetation comes in, it'll be, as Charles says, exactly what I would have built if I had had the opportunity to design it myself. I think you said those words. That's exactly what I said. Yes. <clears throat> All right. What do we have for the next so, question? And I'll add in that El Tesoro has. Absolutely amazing duck search water. And so, while you were down there, you worked multiple dogs. So they also will else, be able to start. start do have, they'll also be ready much earlier in the year because it's 70 degrees in February. And I spent two months with Thunder and Muddy and Quest. and Was Splash down there for not a for Not that. that. No. Okay. Um, but those three specifically have, a, have a good, very, very good start. Oh. Actually, Thunder's. He's, he's there. Yeah. He's got to finish his masters. He's got one pass to go, and then he'll be transferred. And then I get utility. to play with Thunder. And unfortunately, everybody wants to play with Vex. Thunder. Was ready. We got his. Hey, you want to register for the uh, invitational? And we were like, Yeah, we really do. Yeah. And we really can't. So it, it sucks. It sucks. So there is obviously a trend in. We have worked really hard on preparing search water here that we can start dogs on and then obviously move them off as they need to. And all these dogs that have been prepping steadiness wise are going to be able to transition to duck search stuff. Um, that is the goal. So much more to come. Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. The, it says, would you guys do a seminar that would also be for flushers? Um, that is the Lone Stone Seminar. It's a combination <laughs> of versatile dogs and retrievers. So, Jonathan Hubbard, if you're available this weekend, we could probably Come on squeeze in. you in. But you need to let me know so I can go pick up some more groceries so you can eat dinner with us. <laughs> uh, can you pull flight feathers from a quail, like you do pigeons, for steadiness drills, trying to prep for UPT, slowing down GWP? Um, I'd say no. Not, not exactly the same. Now, if you want to follow exactly how we teach steadiness. <laughs> no, I got to read that one next. Okay, I'm if you want to um, follow exactly how we do steadiness, there's a lot of pieces there. If you need some modifications, that is the key to Patreon. You say, I have this available. I'll think creatively with you while still voicing my opinion that this is not exactly the way to be able to go about doing it. But um, in, anyhow, uh, we've got <laughs> another one. <laughs> Can you read it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am loving this response. Nate Roberts. <laughs> so I started watching and joined Patreon years ago. Now I search for interesting bourbons, keep pigeons, and attempt to train my dogs, and my wife just put a deposit down for four goats. Help. <laughs> Uh, Nate, you're I'm welcome. sorry. I'm you're so welcome. sorry. I'm so if you're sorry. not careful, you'll have a job here. <laughs> yeah, where are you living? You could be in Kansas right you, now. You need? Do you need work? Uh, Always looking for good help. Sorry that that hit really close to home, and I love everything about that right now. I have a GSP who is a creeper. At <laughs> Okay. At what age do you suggest teaching them proper manners and to stay out of the little boy's room? No, that turned, that turned dark. Suggest okay. Suggest steadiness um, and training. I'm guessing creeping in on birds. The biggest thing that now I would say. Now I understood what the creeper meant when. Uh, collar conditioning to woe will fix it. your problem. And if you are saying you've done that and it doesn't work, then we need to revisit. So, sorry. <laughs> Whoa training, yep. Whoa training is the key. Yep. Whoa training is the key. I laughed out loud. Do you prefer over and under versus semi automatic? I Depends shoot what we're doing. both. Yep. So quail hunting and training, over and under. Um, semi automatic for basically everything else. Thoughts on the barrel? Whoa training. I've literally never done it, but have considered with thunder. 
He's a little bit happy-footed, but he follows his mother, who follows her mother, who follows, I'm assuming, her mother. Mother line. Mother line. All right, it says, you guys are still holding a Patreon trip. When do you... Wait a second, what did that say? Oh, we got a question. Let me... I started reading, and then we'll jump to that one quick. It says, are you guys still... Stop moving, I found it. Are you guys still holding a Patreon trip when you guys hit over 500 patrons? Does it say something about a specific thing? And I thought it was... Maybe it's I don't think it says that on there anymore, but I might be wrong. Patreon. Look on there and see if I have it still listed as a reward. I got in trouble with Patreon for that, so I think it was removed because you can't do that. We can't You give. can't do that. And if people are doing that, they're not following the rules and because eventually will. Because technically we'll it's gambling is what. Or something. Yeah. Patreon. Would it be in a tier? Or was it just a Patreon post? It would say like a, if you're a patron, it would say something like a, not a uh, tier related. It would just be a goal or something. And I think it removed the goals. I don't see any goals. Yeah, so I removed that because we can't do it that way. They, so they, they want goals like, uh, do fi- 500 patrons and we'll release a special pat- patron only video. Whatever. I don't know. Um, so sorry. Uh, let's go down to that other question there. Go ahead. No, 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 no. That oh. says, okay. So Aaron, thank you for the um, super chat. It says, thank you. Have a blast this weekend. We'd love to have you down sometime. Keep me posted on the pigeons. I know that we were talking about that. Um, and someday a puppy. Yes, yes, yes. Jace Broda says, are, you, are, are your dogs typically big runners? Do they search at high speeds and are there, or are they closer, slower working dogs for the grouse woods? Okay, so our dogs in the grouse woods adjust again, adjust naturally to the situation. We do have some dogs with faster ground speed. We have some dogs with a little um, slower ground speed movement, you know, but ultimately I would say our dogs do adjust very well. There are a few that kind of plow through the woods, but it's just dogs that are not experienced and as they spend enough time there they figure out how to slow down so it's a really good question but again a lot of it does come down to the individual dog so there's one okay go ahead you lost me. goats 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 come on guys we've already been there done that twice but but someday Again, someday we will have goats. I will get just like Kate we have horses again. Someday I will get K to goat. Not even you have a the perfect little fenced in paddock right over there. Where you is do? it? The lagoon. <laughs> 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 that would be perfect. That would, I mean, that really would be good. The goat would figure out how to get out of that though instantly. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know if there's another one. I didn't see another one. Perfect. We're past time for this evening. And we our love little y'all. boys need to go to bed. They need to go to bed. Yep. Yeah. We love you all very much. Uh, we this appreciate your time one. here. Right, we had a blast. We enjoy chatting. We'll see you guys uh, next week. I think so. Yeah. And I wrote down a topic here. This is most Ooh. likely what it'll be. So you get a little says, preview. Um, dog training mindset. This is going to be a deep dive. Okay, I like this so one. dog training mindset key to moving forward. This is a very important part of training that I think kind of gets overlooked. I think people hang up on the negatives and hang up on situations and um, get frustrated. We hear a lot of talk about this, and we want to kind of explain our mindset and approach to the process and. Um, give you some feedback on that. So that'll be next week. You will see an announcement here, hopefully shortly. And, and if you don't subscribe to our newsletter, I put out the entire schedule for live streams. Now, I do want to say uh, last but very, very not least, it will be um, the, the hunt test. Thunder has to finish, right? He needs one more. Piper needs one more. Knock um, on wood. Piper okay. needs one more. And Questy Pop needs two because she's run the least so far, so she's doing well. But uh, May 13th, so Mother's Day weekend, 
I am bugging out, letting mom, you know, be a mom with their little babies. Yep. Won't that be a great Mother's Day for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a Mother's Day brunch planned and sugar cookie decorating. That'll be wonderful. Uh, hopefully, we're going to finish that weekend. It's a double-double, so we have four opportunities. And did anybody get a bingo? If you got a bingo, you need to send me a message on Patreon with your bingo card number. I will verify and then we will get you taken care of. This is like the most random one in a while. Somebody has to have a bingo with all the random places we went. It's, it says we went somebody everywhere. has a bingo, but somebody's got to send me a message. Ah. So I got one only. Click it or ticket, man. <laughs> There's a bingo farce, farce alarm. Farce uh, alarm. So if somebody, I mean, it could be, okay. somebody could use that and get their bingo. Because I guess we have a bingo false alarm. Um, outside of that, folks, we appreciate you. I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Cat the dog trainer.